Hello, here we are again for another uh, Coffee and Craft podcast. Welcome, if you're new here, my name is Kim. As I said, Coffee and Craft podcast where I drink coffee and I, I craft um, and I witter on about all things to do with running a handmade business while you craft or work um, to keep you company, basically. Howdy. And as you can see, I'm still knitting socks for my mental health because <laughs> 2024. It's all right, actually. I'm not going to bash it, but I'm just saying it's it's <sighs> gotten off to a bit of a tricky start and we shall leave it there. That's a video for another day. Today, we're talking about advice that I wish I hadn't taken as a handmade seller over the years. Some of the things I'm going to talk about um, was advice that I got years ago, so it's a bit dated. Um, and some of it is very nuanced. So I want you all to know from the beginning that this is just bad advice that I got from my point of view. It's not necessarily me saying you shouldn't do this because what works for some people doesn't work for others and vice versa. So please take what serves you but leave the rest, okay? And don't shout at me. <laughs> the first bad bit of advice that I got was the same bit of advice but from two different points of view. I know, confusing. Someone said I needed to play to the galleries and I've also been told that I shouldn't play to the galleries. And I can see both sides because when you're running a business, you can't make it all about you. It has to be about your customers, or your viewers or what they want because that's, that's kind of how it works. You can't just be like, I want to make this thing and you will buy it. But on the flip side, when your business is based on creativity and art, of any description, there has to be an element of turning your back on the galleries and following your creativity, your spark, which I know that sounds terribly woo, but that's also how artists work. <laughs> to add a little bit of nuance, which is optimistic of me because this is the internet and the internet does not like nuance, there is a balance to be met. You, you do want to play to the galleries, but not too much. And uh, you do want to turn your back on the galleries, but not forever. <laughs> it's this. I think running a handmade business is particularly weird like that. You do kind of have to embrace a bit of both. And um, it's hard. It's like, I don't know if I've used this analogy in the past, but it's like your handmade business is a car and you've got a business person and a creative person and sometimes the business person has to take the wheel and drive the car and then sometimes when you're creating the business person has to get in the passenger seat and then it's time for the artist to drive but then vice versa if you're doing business stuff then the, the artist has to get in the passenger seat and let the business person drive Do you see what I mean it's <sighs> luckily I enjoy both parts I love running my business like just the process of running my business which is why this channel exists but I also love the making and the creating and completely sacking off the business side of things which seems a bit counterintuitive but I love that so yes playing to the galleries yeah cool sometimes but not all the time I just wish somebody had broken that advice down a little bit further and said you're gonna need to do a little bit of both and there's a balance to be met and sometimes you're going to get the balance wrong, but that's okay. Um, chasing trends. I think I was given the advice again years ago that one way to um, increase growth was to jump on trends and just keep an eye out for the next trend coming and sort of thing. So see if you can jump on it as soon as it comes in. And I just found the whole... I, I get Again, I get their point, but I found the whole process of chasing trends to be um, bloody exhausting and I quickly dropped it because ugh, who has the time? Not a handmade seller, they're too busy trying to do all of the things in their business. So sure, if a trend comes along that's a good fit, I will jump on that. But am I gonna go out and chase them? No. So yes, for me, the whole trends thing was, was bad advice. <laughs> it's definitely not bad for everyone, but it's, it's just not a good fit for me and the way my brain works. The next one is another one where you need to um, apply a big dollop of common sense and that's niching down. 
I actually spoke about this recently on my uh, in my Patreon group because we, we talk about YouTube there for, for handmade businesses. The idea of niching down, at least from a YouTube point of view, it can definitely help growth fast, but there's always that danger in any kind of niching, whatever kind of thing you're niching into, be it YouTube, um, products, social media, blah, blah, blah. You can niche yourself into a corner very quickly. And I think we need to, when we think of niching down, we need to remember that there's a point where we can niche too far. So perhaps niche down a little bit, but keep space. Make sure that we protect space for us to grow, evolve, play. Because again, handmade sellers, the creativity, we need to play. We need to sort of make things that are not important. We need to make things that may not work. Um, we need to make things that are just for us. It's another one that requires a bit of a balancing act. You, you obviously want to niche down, but you, you just don't want to niche yourself into a corner where you can't break out of it. One of the pieces of advice that really gets my hackles up every time is when people say that you can't have too many items in your shop that are different. I get their point of view because you're thinking that if a possible customer comes to your shop, you don't want to confuse them. However, you can be clear about your intent, about what you, you stand for, what you do, without niching down to just one kind of product. And I think the confusion comes from a lack of communication, not from a lack of niching. And also we, we think too much about niching in terms of the products themselves, rather than maybe the medium of the products. For example, um, I know I'm surrounded by crochet and knitting, <laughs> but I actually do hand embroidery. This stuff is, this is, this is a for me thing. Um, but my business is based on hand embroidery. So I have been told fairly recently that I shouldn't, I shouldn't chase too many different ideas within that niche. We were talking about some of the ideas that I had. For example, I was, I was toying with the idea of doing embroidered earrings at one point. I'm not going to. Um, and they were like, yeah, but you do, you do craft supplies and um, project bags and I do I do hand embroidered project bags and I'd also talked about doing some form of embroidered uh, clothing again and they were like yeah but that's not really your niche and I just thought my niche is hand embroidery if I want to sell hand embroidered tea bags that's perfectly fine I'm, I <laughs> sometimes you guys I'm as surprised at what comes out of my mouth as you are trust me <laughs> hand embroidered tea. that's probably a thing though okay we're looking on Etsy no, but apparently tea bag cases are a thing. Anyway, what the hell am I doing? That is a rabbit hole. Niching. Um, you get my drift. It's it's it it can be really bad advice if it's taken too far. We'll move on now. Spreading myself out too thin online. This was one of the early day uh, mistakes that I made. Um, the advice was, where there is a platform, you must be on it, and I followed that and. <sighs> I drop that one pretty quick because nobody has that much time on their hands. What time we do have, we need to be spending on our business, not running around from platform to platform trying to appease the various algorithms. Over the years, what I've done is I've just chosen the ones that I like the best that my customers are on and I've focused on those and that is YouTube and Instagram. Sometimes Instagram. I'm losing the will to live with Instagram a little bit. I don't always feel very good when I come off of it. Maybe that's a video for another day. I'm sure I will start loving it again soon. But right now, I'm just like, I should post on Instagram. I don't want to. So yes, if you want to find me, I'm usually on YouTube somewhere or Patreon. And that's it. Um, another piece of advice that I thought was hooey was you need to be an authority in your niche. Now, I am quite authority averse. And the advice years ago was to position yourself as an authority figure. It's like whatever um, niche that you, you know, presented yourself in, you had to be the go-to person. And the trouble is that now, years on, every single person, regardless of what their niche is, regardless of what they do, they come out of the door and they're like, I am the authority figure. I am the one that you need to come to. And it's like, no, <laughs> leave me be. Whenever I stop enjoying my, my time here on this YouTube channel, it's usually when I've fallen a bit too far into that. I kind of 
have to remind myself of why I started this YouTube channel in the first place. And it was always to start up a community. <laughs> this sounds so selfish now. Um, it's always to start up as a community of handmade sellers, handmade makers, so that we can have a water cooler moment because we don't have that. And I, I, that's, I don't miss much from my previous job, but I do miss that. Um, we Did we have a water cooler? I think we did, but we never used to sort of gather around it. It was the kitchen when people were making teas and coffees. That's that's where the magic used to happen. <laughs> I miss that. And I, I just miss the, the, you know, that camaraderie with some of them. I don't miss all of them, but we'll move on. I just sort of think, why can't we be successful in our niches, but just position ourselves as a peer? you know, a, a fellow person. Why why does there have to be this bloody hierarchy? So yeah, I do get the whole point of setting yourself up as an authority in your niche, but I think it, for handmade sellers, and that's the point of view that I'm coming at with everything in this video, I think it can sometimes be detrimental. And I personally don't want to be seen as an authority figure because I find it's the pressure. Yeah, this is, not bashing anyone who's positioning themselves as an authority figure because there's definitely a time and a place for that and there's um there's times when you want an authority figure the problem again i think balance has been like a a running theme throughout this video um the problem is when the balance is tipped and everyone's trying to be the authority and i just feel that's when it, it gets really I hate the word inauthentic, but you know what I mean. Not We can't all be authority figures. And we might be an authority in one thing, but not everything. Yeah, I don't know. I just, it makes me feel very uncomfortable. And I don't want it. So I will not be trying to position myself as an authority in anything. <laughs> Digressing and going off on tangents. Now that, pff, I'm your girl. <laughs> I will happily take that. But everything else, running a business, running a handmade business, uh, running a YouTube channel, I'm not the authority on that. I can offer you my experience and my opinions, and that will be worth something to some people. But it doesn't mean to say that I know everything. And I don't want to put myself in a position where that's the expectation. I just find that piece of advice a bit icky, and it's, it's just, as you can tell, not for me. And let's just finish with this little gem. It was when someone said that I couldn't make my hobby my business because work was hard and it was graft. And yeah, I think it was the idea of me doing something that I enjoy, <laughs> that I loved. It, it, it wouldn't pay the bills. How do you like me now? <laughs> oh, that was a bit of an evil goblin type laugh, but you get my point. Um. Before I started my business, I was working part-time at a, a place, you don't need to know where, um, to help me pay my bills. And I am now currently, even in the middle of a cost of living crisis, um, earning more than I was in that job then. So, yes, you can pay your bills with a job that you love. It doesn't have to be a hobby. And um, I will agree on the, the work is graft. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Just because I love what I do doesn't mean that it's not hard bloody work. It doesn't mean that I don't have to do things that I don't enjoy. Um, it doesn't mean that I don't sometimes lie in bed going, I just want to stay here and not do anything today, but I have to do stuff. That being said, that doesn't mean to say that you can't do a, a job that you genuinely adore. And I think sometimes people tell themselves that that is what work is. It has to be something that you you really dislike, you really hate, otherwise it's not really work. Well, ooh, that's, that's a conversation to have with a therapist, I think. <laughs> anyway, my friends, as I was talking, I, I realised there were so many others that I, I could have said, but just for some form of brevity, what is my hair doing now? Who knows? Um, I'm going to wrap it up here. But seeing as last week I was talking about um, Etsy giving really bad advice, I don't know. I just, I wasn't ready to get off this little train of thought. So the theme of bad advice continues. <laughs> I'm sure I'll rock up next week with something else though. Sometimes it just happens that way. Um, I'll have a list of videos that I want to make and then I'll wake up in the morning and I'll think, no, 
No, we're making a video about bad advice today. <laughs> Okay, if you're not sick of me yet, I will put another video here. I have no idea which one YouTube will choose for you. Um, let me know. Even if you don't watch it, let me know what video pops up here. It would just be curious to see if you're all shown something different. And I will see you again next week. Ta-ra!